program, I think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So tell, tell us about this. I was talking about what you told me this morning, but I was doing an okay job, but not like you. I was having lunch and you were doing perfect. So I just gonna let you go. You know, I could have figured you were in the lunch area. We could have done this interview in the lunch area. And I would have been better off too. Anyway, tell us about the car. Well, it's interesting because it was, I was like the ones that had it since back in 80, 81. And, um, and we've sold a number of them over the years out of our facility. And somebody called up and said, well, this car is sitting in Texas in a garage and it's got this silly paint job on it with a bunch of colors and, and the wrong wheels and the wrong interior. And, and it, it's going to be pretty cheap and I want to get rid of it. So I sent somebody to look at it to make sure it had never been damaged and no corrosion. These, these tended to have corrosion because they just took them. They were made in Italy, the chassis for, for BMW. and. And so they fiberglass the body of the chassis and didn't do any rust proofing. Well, it was completely dry, had never been damaged, it was just in horrible condition. Um, it had been driven quite a bit, it had 40 some thousand kilometers on it at the time, which is a lot on the M1. So we, we, this was like in 2012, we bought it and just stuck it in that, you see my parking thing that goes four layers high, so we just stuck it in one of those holes and left it. And then in, uh, <coughs> In uh, oh. December, I said, well, let's pull that M1 down. We need to restore it, thinking it's just a street car. Um, and it was actually a tuner car for EHG. EHG is the largest BMW dealership in Germany. And they did tuner cars. They did stuff for BMW. They did art cars and stuff. So when we got it down and started going through it, it had four layers of paint on it. It had, had three different art paint jobs on it. And the last one was this, you know, silver, the lines all the way to a dark charcoal was just horrible, 1980s tacky. And AHG decided to do their own tuner version, so it had this funny looking flare and a rubber spoiler and a rubber rubber front spoiler, rubber rear wing, um, velour and seat inserts. It was, you know, BMW, uh, M, uh, BBS wheels, the one piece, those old ones that were the basket wheels, which were never very pretty, so it was kind of tacky. So we just, we started stripping it down when we got down to the gel coat, we found holes in the car where things normally would bolt on like a race car, like the rear wing, like you're talking about. Those holes were there, epoxied in. And everywhere we went, we found race car stuff, adjustable suspension points, the front sway bar in a different place, oil cooler brackets, etc. So we took the VIN number and sent it to Klaus over at BMW Classic, because we've done several cars for them to the museum. And uh, he came back and said, oh yeah, it's a pro car. He said, they built 40. And there were three for sure, and maybe four that were never raced, they were just spares. So then I had a little different idea what it should look like from that point forward. So we actually bought original Pro Car bodywork, modified it extensively so that it had no external fasteners. The front fenders are actually narrowed up on a, on a Pro Car, they, they hung out an inch and a half further. They almost hung way past the tire, they looked funny. But you know, I said, when guys are building race car parts, they're in a hurry, they're not. He probably didn't have a wheel tire hub on the car when he did that panel. So we narrowed that panel up and made everything line up with the spoilers and we just made it all fit like a like a production street car. And these bodies were fiberglass so we had to block it extensively to get it this straight and do all the gaps and and um, and really then we went and found all original pro car suspension, all the uprights, the hubs, the center lock wheels, the, a set of wheels, everything. The wheels were sixteen inch in the day. We put 17-inch rim halves on the on the original centers because you can get you can't get tires good radials for 16-inch and we wanted to put Michelin's on it so that allowed us to put the tires and the wheel fans we made they're aluminum and we just hand made those just because they had wheel fans in the day just like that for when they ran the Pro Car series originally they had a gas filler on the side of the body which was stock M1 and to race them they put a Lexan window in the rear quarter and then would rivet in um, a drive brake. And I wanted the drive brake, but we left the hinged window so the drive brake's just behind the hinged window. But the cool thing is the drive brake's real, except you just twist that little thing, it comes off and it's just a regular gas opening to put fuel in it. And, um, and then the engine, we, we, put, we put bigger brakes on it. We put larger rotors, and we literally put the Brembo four-piston calibers were used on the 962 Porsches, because with the bigger rims, we had more room in the, in the, in the corners. And the original brakes were the most efficient part of the car. They used an Ate caliber back when they ran them as pro cars, and they had a lot of brake problems. So we changed that. And then the engine on these was basically a three-liter engine. 
they made about 290 horsepower. This engine now is four, it's the same engine, but it's 4.1 liter. It's fully electronic, although it looks completely stock. The pump's on there, everything, but it's all electronic. It's all MoTeC, and it's almost 450 horsepower with the last tune now. It's about that. So, um, the interior, we got rid of the, the black and white, and just did everything that would have been black and white in M1. We did in perforated leather, and deleted the ashtray, and deleted a bunch of things. But the nice thing is, it's a road car. It's got air conditioning, and you know, it just drives fabulous, just like a regular M1. You took a classic, iconic vintage car and brought it into the 21st century, really. I mean, that's what you did. I mean, given it the horse, 290 was big horsepower when this car was built. But 400 is like something you buy for your wife now. You know? I mean, you know, the car only has 300 horsepower. What's wrong with that? You know? I gave that to my, my child. Just got their driver's license. So anyway, it's beautiful. And the, the color, like we were talking earlier, it's like a gray blue or they call it gra bla or whatever in German. The, co the color was an interesting story because when we talked to BMW, I knew all the colors of M1s and it was the hardest thing was to try to figure out what color to put on it. And then BMW had told us there were four M1s uh, near Spock, who was the chairman at the time and one of the family members and two board members, four cars were built this color. It wasn't offered to consumers. And, and so we, he gave us the name of the color and he gave us the glossary plug code and we transferred that to our PPG and painted it this gray blue which is just a stunning color. Yeah, and then you had to go out and try and find a polo shirt to match, huh? That took, that took a while. That, that was longer than anything else. Well Bruce, thanks a lot. It's an iconic car and I mean I love the wheel fans and all the you know, the design stuff from back then. I mean, it's just so cool. And if you get a chance, you want to look closer inside. I know Bruce will open up the door here and show you the mats and all. Because they did just a slight little bit of tweaking here and there, just making it really tasteful. And that's really everything that we're talking about is tasteful. Check out the engine, check out the stacks, the injector stacks, the red. You said they were red originally, which is really cool. Yeah, no, that, that engine appearance-wise is, they had an air cleaner on them, and we eliminated the air cleaner and put the screens on. But other than that, that engine is just how they looked in, in 1979 and 80. Um, the other thing that um, was really cool on this car is that as we went through it, we found all those things. We were able to find an original set of Pro Car mirrors in Germany, brand new ones in a box. We started finding lots of things. Once we got rolling on BMWs, because you know we do a lot more Porsches than BMWs, it was amazing how many things we found all over the country just uh, available to us to do that. Unbelievable. Well, thanks a lot, Bruce. Thank you so much for uh, telling us not only the history of the car, but what you did to it, because you know, I mean, a lot of the people standing around here are into tweaking things a little bit here at this college. They love how you just massage things, so very cool. All right, we've got a, uh, another person that's...